who uh, I'm trusting in God and, and, and not in myself and looking forward to uh, seeing him. Bishop Emeritus John Darcy dies today at the age of 80. We dedicate tonight's show to this man of God. Good evening, I'm Melissa Long. Bishop Emeritus Darcy died this morning at his Fort Wayne home after a little more than a month of battling cancer in his lung and brain. His two sisters were with him when he died peacefully at home. Bishop Kevin Rhodes called Darcy a dear friend, brother bishop, and a good shepherd after the heart of Christ. He called for prayers on Bishop Darcy's behalf. No funeral arrangements have been announced at this time. Bishop Emeritus Darcy was 80 years old, and when I interviewed him recently in Boston, I was struck by the calm, peaceful way in which he dealt with his impending death. He said he'd always try to do his best and was grateful for a life of love. Our Rachel Martin is here with a little more on the history of his tenure here in the diocese. Rachel. Yes, Melissa, I never had the honor of meeting Bishop Darcy myself, but I've heard so many people, including some here in the newsroom, talk about his vivacious personality. But from seeing videos and watching his latest interview, it seemed like he had a lot of great memories from his times here in, in, in Boston and also here in Fort Wayne. Now here's a look back at the timeline of his life. He was born John Michael Darcy on August 18, 1932, at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in Boston. He grew up just outside of Boston in Brighton, Massachusetts, to Irish immigrant parents Michael and Margaret, along with three sisters, Anne, Joan, and Mary. Bishop Darcy entered St. John's Seminary in Boston in 1949 and was ordained a priest in 1957. From 1965 to 1968, he studied at the Angelicum in Rome, where he received his doctorate in spiritual theology. After that, he moved back to Boston to serve as spiritual director and a professor at St. John's Seminary. In February of 1974, Darcy was consecrated an auxiliary bishop of the Boston Archdiocese, where he served for a decade. That's when Darcy came to Northeast Indiana. He was installed as Bishop of Fort Wayne South Bend May 1st, 1985 at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. He replaced Bishop William McManus. Darcy was Bishop until 2010 when church rules mandated that he retired. He was succeeded by the current Bishop, Kevin Rhodes. In February 2011, Darcy was diagnosed with prostate cancer but ultimately beat the disease. And just last month, he was diagnosed again with cancer, but this time of the lung and brain. Bishop Darcy died Sunday morning surrounded by family and friends in his Fort Wayne home. He was 80 years old. Now, Melissa, at the time of his, di his diagnosis, he was visiting friends and family in Boston over the holidays, and he was undergoing radiation treatments there, but it's nice that he was able to actually be back here in Fort Wayne at his own home. Yes. You know, you hear so many people passing in hospitals people instead of at his oh, home. Yeah. So it was, I think that's very special that he was actually here. He was a remarkable person, and he really, as much as he loved Boston, he really <laughs> considered this his home now, and very much wanted wanted to get back here. Uh, so yes, I'm really happy that he was able to get back here for, for some time and that his sisters were able to come out here yeah, and it, it be with him It seemed like well. so many people really loved him. He, he was, uh, he was an outstanding person and he'll be missed by many. Thank you, Rachel. Well, on November 14th of 2009, it became official that Bishop John Darcy of the Fort Wayne South Bend Catholic Diocese was going to retire. It was announced in a news conference in downtown Fort Wayne. Our reporter John Davis was there when the well-known and much-loved bishop said he was stepping down. He was going to be replaced by a 52-year-old bishop from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, it's a day of joy. It's a day of joy for the whole diocese. So a new bishop is something that we should welcome with joy across the diocese. I'm excited. I know Bishop Darcy is, uh, it's, it's a little bit of sadness for him, but I, he has done such wonderful things. But I'm excited to get to know the new bishop. It was a day we all knew would come sooner or later. Bishop John Darcy announces his retirement from the Diocese of Fort Wayne and South Bend. Darcy's reason, he's required by the Catholic Church to step down because of his age. The transition between Bishop Rhodes and Bishop Darcy began about three weeks ago when Bishop Rhodes received the official word from Rome. The transition will end right here in downtown Fort Wayne on Wednesday, January 13th at the Cathedral of Immaculate Conception. 
Uh, the bishop has made one very good decision. The new bishop. He's told me I could stay in that house where I've lived for 24 years. So let's give him some All jokes aside, Bishop Darcy says one of the major reasons he wanted Bishop Rhodes to replace him was because he's fluent in Spanish. He feels that will make Rhodes an asset to Fort Wayne's growing Hispanic community. The 24-year veteran says although he's retiring, he's not going anywhere. I'm going to live here. I'm going to live in, in Fort Wayne. I'll help with confirmations, help the bishop in any way he wants. And um, I've loved every minute as bishop of this diocese, every minute. It's been, it's been a joy. Oh, so I feel it's a real blessing to come here and serve with Bishop Darcy uh, still being here. So I'm very grateful for that. And that was our reporter, John W. Davis, who uh, covered also for us Bishop Darcy's last mass, which of course was a bittersweet time for Catholics in Northeast Indiana. He prepared to give his final mass at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in downtown Fort Wayne. Here is a look at that last mass. A touch of sadness, but also gratitude. It's, a, it's been a, a work of love. After nearly 25 years, longtime Bishop John Darcy will retire this week. Darcy says being bishop is not about the title. It's about God's work and community service. The people, the families, the children, the teenagers, Catholic high schools, uh, it's all been a great blessing. I, don't, I didn't deserve it. I never felt worthy. But I never wanted to give it up. I give it up now because of the will of God. In the Catholic Church, bishops are supposed to step down at 75. But the 77-year-old Darcy was given an extra two years. And for that, priests and parishioners alike are thankful. Compassionate and understanding of people. And he was always uh, somebody that people felt they could go to and talk with uh, easily. We come from all different backgrounds and just they need, a person needs to feel that they're important and just to be able to talk to uh, someone like our bishop and approach him in a friendly manner, I think that's a great thing. Darcy's time in Fort Wayne wasn't without challenges, but church leaders say the bishop is leaving the diocese in better financial shape than he inherited. I think I did with my life what God wanted me to do. This is definitely what God wanted me the last 25 years. Uh, I can never say thanks enough to him. Lots of the people here. Bishop Darcy says he'll continue to call Fort Wayne home. He'll stick around the area as an advisor and a reverend. Reporting from downtown Fort Wayne, John W. Davis. And of course, Bishop Darcy made a tremendous impact not only on his diocese, but on the Catholic Church in general. One of the most disturbing episodes in the Catholic Church was the scandal of widespread sexual abuse of young boys by priests. The church's practice of sweeping those incidents under the rug by transferring problem priests from parish to parish was something about which then Auxiliary Bishop John Darcy would not be silent. He was in the Archdiocese of Boston at the time. He complained in a letter to none other than Cardinal Bernard Law about the reassignment of this man, Father John Gagan, to another parish because of his history of homosexual involvement with young boys. His letters dared to question Law's decisions on the matter. Two months later, Bishop Darcy was gone, transferred to the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. Darcy was called a hero and a voice crying in the wilderness, raising the red flag on the scandal when no one else at the time did. He never admitted to a connection between his letters to law and his transfer out of the Boston Archdiocese. But those who extensively researched the matter for the Boston Globe saw his reassignment as a direct result of Darcy's warnings. Instead, Bishop Darcy saw his new assignment as a gift, and he continued to push for strict standards for those who enter the seminary, believing it's more important to have quality priests than many priests. Uh, we had a lot of challenges early on in schools and in life and the things that happened across the country among priests. Mm -hmm. But God gave us the light and strength to do it. And I had wonderful people around me. Uh, I, I love the priests. I've, I've always been devoted to priests. It's the main uh, responsibility of the bishop. And we had great priests out there. People have told me that. And God is, and I always prayed that God would send us more because we need them and we're beginning to get them. And Bishop Darcy's forthright defense of his faith continued as he refused to appear at events alongside outspoken pro-choice advocates, even the President of the United States. 
when Notre Dame University, an iconic Catholic institution, invited President Barack Obama to be the commencement speaker and to receive an honorary law degree on May 17, 2009. It was news to the bishop, whose diocese, of course, includes Notre Dame. The presidential invite and the bishop's subsequent decision not to attend the graduation ceremony generated an overwhelming response from all over the world. The bishop issued a statement but refused all television interviews until he sat down with us to explain his decision. While it's been a tradition for Notre Dame to invite new presidents to give the commencement address, Bishop Darcy said he was stunned at the decision, especially since he wasn't informed until after it was made public. He told Father Jenkins, the president of Notre Dame, he probably wouldn't be attending the ceremony, that he respected the president, but not his policies on abortion and embryonic stem cell research. This is giving a, a doctor of laws to a person whose only experience with laws in the state legislature and here has been anti-life laws. But my position, if, if I'm up there on the platform, it must be okay. Yeah. It's, saying, it's saying to the young people, well, it's okay. It really doesn't matter. My fear is that Notre Dame has alienated itself from the Catholic community, from the bishops, many bishops are writing, from ordinary Catholic people. The bishop told me he is not in favor of a penalty against Notre Dame. He believes a dialogue is the way to handle it. But he isn't at all sure if Father Jenkins understands his decision. I don't know if he understands my position. I think he minds it. But I, I, I think it's, he's troubled by it, and I don't think he really is eager to talk about it too much. <laughs> if that's true, then he must be about the only one. The diocese has received more than 3,000 emails, letters, and phone calls on the matter, and it's been discussed at every major network and newspaper. We have received an outpouring of comment from our viewers, and one question they wanted me to ask the bishop was about his attendance at George W. Bush's commencement address at Notre Dame as the church opposes capital punishment, which Bush supports. The Catholic Church's position is that the taking of a life in a womb is an intrinsically evil act. It doesn't say that about the death penalty. A good Catholic could disagree with the church on the death penalty. And about President Obama. If, if he came for a seminar, even on this issue, or on health care or something like that, that's what university should be doing. But to honor someone, doctorate of laws, and the only laws he has made uh, are laws which are against innocent life. So I, I think Notre Dame wishes to be a very a significant university in, in the public order, and it is, and I think that's what it must have driven the decision. You know, uh, to be at those graduations, the mass the day before, all the, all the uh, young people that are there, all their parents that are there, their, their friends that are there, and they're graduating from this splendid university. How beautiful is life? They'll go out to the world, they'll fall in love, they'll have children, they'll have grandchildren, they'll have families. No one is allowed to say who's going to sit at the table of life, and more important, who's not going to sit at the table of life. God didn't give us that privilege. He gave us many other privileges. That belongs to him alone. This is so central. There's no other right unless you have the right to life. And a Catholic university should, should support that 100%. Very outspoken on that issue. And uh, the cancer in Bishop Darcy's lung and brain, uh, as you may know, was discovered over the Christmas holiday as he vacationed at his home in Boston, his childhood home. Executive producer Nicole Hahn, chief photographer Brian Gillett, and I went to Boston and spoke with the bishop. He talked candidly about his health, his life, his hope for the future of the diocese. Uh, here is that exclusive interview shot less than three weeks ago. It is said that there are no coincidences, so Bishop Darcy sees the hand of God in the timing of his diagnosis. He'd celebrated Mass in his home parish in Boston, shared a wonderful family Christmas at his childhood home, and after having some difficulty with his vision and other symptoms, went to St. Elizabeth's Hospital, where he was born 80 years ago. The diagnosis of cancer in his lung and brain came as a shock. But it was made easier because his sisters, Anne and Joan, were around him and they were able to care for him in the home in which they grew up. His longtime assistant, Maureen, bought a one-way ticket to Boston to help him as radiation treatments began. I feel pretty good. I haven't had a lot of pain. I feel some weakness. I'm eating very well, sleeping pretty well. Um, so I, I appreciate the prayers of everyone from 
all over, but especially from the diocese that I loved and still love and try to serve. I'm trusting in God and, and, and not in myself and looking forward to uh, seeing him. How wonderful to be back in the house where I prepared my father and mother for death mm -hmm. and uh, where I grew up. I was in this house uh, with my father in 1944 when he bought it for $7,500. And uh, as an Irishman, he thought it was too much. <laughs> Letters from children of the diocese, visits from priests, console and encourage him, and of course, faith and prayer, which have sustained him throughout his life, a life he has lived with joy and love. One of the great gifts you have as a priest is to, um, to help people die. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And so I had some priests here come and came and helped me die. My family has helped me. Well, he's my brother, my friend. It's love and joy that uh, that makes me think of John. Right. Yeah, I mean, even love, love of his parents, love of his Irish heritage, uh, love of the church, uh, love of the Diocese of Boston, of Fort Wayne, um, love of sports, especially the Red Sox, um, but mostly love of Christ. I mean, that's, he's fallen in love with God. Really, and that's not easy. It's 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 a life of love, yeah. or it's nothing. Pastoral love, you know, care for care for them as Jesus Christ would care for them. So that's what I've tried to do. And <laughs> as you get ready for the end, not as well as I should have. I I I'm I'm very aware of that 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 I should have done better, but I leave that to God. And, of course, in that same interview, the bishop uh, sent a message to the people of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. Uh, we visited with him further in his home uh, in Boston. He told us he had accepted the seriousness of his health situation. He said the prognosis was very serious and that he was comforted by the many prayers and messages from the people that he'd served for 28 years. And now we'll hear from the bishop about his love for that diocese and his hopes for the future of its families. Bishop Emeritus John Darcy feels it was a great gift to be sent to the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese where he was installed in 1985. It was the right diocese for me. A little too much driving sometimes. During his time as bishop, he helped strengthen the schools, restore the cathedral, and improve the quality of priests. I have to praise God for, for giving me light uh, in, in the decisions that I had to make, giving me good advisors. They were good advisors, priests and laity, uh, who advised me. And um, I loved every bit of that diocese. I loved going to the parishes. The privilege, of, uh, the privilege of shepherding that diocese, retirement wasn't easy because uh, you're giving up what, what's called in theological literature your spouse. Right. How, can you, how can you be pleased to give up something that you love and where you've received love? But he did retire in 2010, and it gave him more time to pray and reflect and to return to his roots as a priest. And it's as a priest that he prays for his diocese. I really am praying for you. I'm praying for the diocese, praying for the people. I urge you all to be strong in your faith, to be close, to, first of all, the Catholic people, to be close to Christ, close to the Mass, prayer, and trust and be joyful. Joyful is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Be joyful be, be, and be gra grateful for your faith and be strong and um, pray every day. Bishop Darcy feels it's a daunting time for the church and that its greatest strength is in its families. He said he wouldn't mind being around and making his contribution, but that's not in his hands. I've had a great 80 years. Would I like another half a dozen in a minute? Yes. <laughs> in a minute, but I... I I pray now, I have accepted it. I pray the grace to accept it more and to be strengthened. And his message to the diocese? To raise your families in the, in, the, in the faith, in the church. Teach them how to pray. Teach them the truth. Everyone should pray a little every day. And clergy all over the diocese are mourning the loss of Bishop Darcy tonight. We found Monsignor Robert Schulte as he was preparing for mass at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Yes, it's certainly a sad day. I think Fort Wayne has lost a, a good leader, a good religious leader, who had a great love of the poor as well as uh, love of the people of God and tried to bring people to Christ.
A lot of the younger adults remember him as being the bishop who confirmed them, gave them the sacrament of confirmation, and uh, it's the bishop they've grown up with. And so uh, for, him, for them, he's been the voice of the local church here and, and helped to uh, help them to understand uh, the message of Christ. So I think that uh, a lot of those people, and, and, and really all the people of the diocese who've gotten to know him have, have, will, will miss him in different ways. They have the different experiences with Bishop, and he was very personable, very outgoing, very friendly with a lot of people. And so, um, and he, he had a knack or, for remembering uh, names of people. I, I don't know how he did it, but he remembered a lot of people's names, and it was really impressive to me. <laughs> Monsignor Schulte is the Vicar General of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. When we received the news of the bishop's passing, we immediately set out to get reactions from members of the diocese. We sent Chief Photographer Brian Gillett down to the cathedral. He just so happened to catch people heading into evening mass. Here are some of their reflections. Uh, I'm kind of sunk uh, right now. I didn't know that the, the bishop passed away. He, he's a uh, He's been a pillar of our community, and uh, I'm from Decatur, and uh, he's been down to our parish many, many times, and uh, he loves uh, he loves a lot of people in the community, and he, he, he's done so much for, uh, for our community and our church. I'm sad, but I know he was a dear, wonderful man, and I know that he is with the Lord. It's, it's depressing because we lose someone who's part of the, the giant family that we have here. Uh, the student at St. Francis, uh, it's a, much closer there because you see him around every once in a while. I've been to the TV Mass and sat real close to him, so there's a connection with what he says and his homilies really spoke to me and it's just going to be a hard person to replace. Yeah, it's, a, it's, unfo it's an unfortunate uh, event today, losing the bishop. Uh, he's been a uh, cellar uh, rock of our diocese for a number of years and, and it's a, a sad day for us. To, having passed. It saddens me deeply. Um, he had a special place in my heart. He um, was good friends with my husband and um, said my husband's funeral mass in Decatur. And I'm very sad. Well, I came to the 11 o'clock mass and at the time of the prayer for the faithful, we pray for his health. And uh, I got home about uh, 1.30 and uh, as soon as I got home, about two o'clock, I got a phone call from my son and his wife. They are on the prayer line and uh, to tell me that Bishop Darcy had passed. So I said, oh my God, may his soul rest in peace. He was a wonderful bishop a wonderful man to the community. Uh, he was truly a man of the cloth. Um, he was the one that uh, gave confirmation to my children. Uh, my daughter, uh, she was an altar girl here at the cathedral and she celebrated a lot of is with him. Uh, all I can say is that he is going to be missed. And uh, all I hope it is that we follow his example and that um, we will be able to always remember him. Just some of the reflections from those attending Mass today. Sean McBride has been a part of the Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese for a long time. He just recently became their Secretary of Communications, and he's kept in touch with us from the time of Bishop Darcy's second diagnosis, giving us updates from the bishop and his family. And we have Sean on the phone with us now. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight, Sean. We appreciate it. Uh, first of all, what are some of your recollections of the bishop? Well, uh, Ms. Melissa, good evening, and, and thanks very much for, for having me on tonight. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much time you have, but because I could go on and on <laughs> with, with stories I have. Um, you know, it started very early, my recollection, uh, with Bishop Darcy, because he brought the televised mass uh, to Fort Wayne uh, from Boston. And um, he got my father involved with it uh, from day one as the associate producer, which 
for me on a very personal note, because my mother was disabled, uh, was just such a godsend. And, uh, you know, that ministry uh, remained so near and dear uh, to my family um, that when my father's health began to wane, um, I, I kind of took over for them. It's been 16 years for me now, and uh, and now my sons are, are actively involved with it uh, as well. Um, you know, Bishop Darcy is He's such a champion of the faith. He is, he's got an iron will, and, and I say that because he has an iron will, because he has an iron faith, and his faith in the Lord is just incredible and remarkable. And it, and it shows itself in his love for the people. He just has a charism about himself um, that exuded that when you had a conversation with Bishop Darcy, it was you and he and nothing more, and, and he just made you feel like you were the center of the universe when you were talking to him. And, and I know everyone feels that way, but, you know, unless you truly know him, and I, Melissa, I know you do, um, you would hearken to that, because it's absolutely true. He was a man of deep faith, uh, deep love, and, um, and yes, we're sad today, but overjoyed as well, because we honestly believe, um, you know, that uh, he's talking about Notre Dame football with Jesus right now. <laughs> yes, uh, he certainly loved that, and uh, as well as the uh, the Red Sox, as his sister said. Uh, you know, he did have such a warm personality and was a remarkable man. And when I spoke with him in Boston, uh, he told me how much he valued his relationships with non-Catholics in our community. Uh, I am not a Catholic myself. In fact, we had a, a joke, an ongoing joke, that I was his favorite Lutheran. Uh, but he he, he, he valued his relationships, and he worked to build those relationships with Jewish people, with Lutherans, with other uh, denominations. Uh, he just was a real tireless worker on behalf of the Catholic Church, but also on behalf of the entire community. Well, he was, Melissa. And you bring up a really good point, because we're all God's children, and we're all rooted in, 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 uh, in God's love for each and every one of us. He understands that, and he respects that, and he knows in everyone's heart um, that, uh, you know, there's an old saying, you know, if in fact I don't like somebody, it's just because I don't know them well enough. Well, yeah. he, he understood that, and he strove on a daily basis to get to know more and more people within and outside of the Catholic faith, because, uh, again, he sees love in everyone's heart, and, and he wants it to grow, and uh, he wants to expound upon that, and he was... You know, his first love was that of being a priest, and uh, everyone will tell you that. Administering uh, the sacraments and, and again, reaching out uh, to people of all faiths and, um, and being a beacon of love, that was Bishop Darcy. Yes, and he encouraged people who disagreed with the Catholic Church on a number of issues to not return anger with anger, but to return anger with love. Uh, we talked about that as well in Boston, uh, and you are so right to, to characterize uh, that part of his life as just a, a love uh, that just exuded and surrounded him, and I think that's what drew people to him. Um, I know there haven't been any funeral arrangements announced. Uh, I remember when the former Bishop McManus passed away, he was in Chicago, um, but Bishop Jar Darcy chose to, to come back to Fort Wayne. And uh, So what kind of uh, thing is normal in this type of a situation in terms of funeral arrangements? And we know South Bend is to be considered as well. Well, you're exactly right, and South Bend is certainly um, near and dear to his heart, yes. and he absolutely loves the people in South Bend. Um, and so it, um, it, it's a little bit tricky because uh, yeah. the hyphen in our diocese with yeah. South Bend and Fort Wayne. Um, but I think, and, and of course the, the plans are still evolving and, and, and setting into concrete here, but it will probably be a two to possibly three day uh, schedule of events and um, with the culmination of a funeral mass here at the uh, Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception uh, in Fort Wayne. And um, so I would... I would uh, encourage everyone to uh, keep an eye on the diocesan website and of course your team and, and the local media everywhere Melissa will, will be up to speed as, as soon as those details are made available because we know it, uh, it's probably going to be a well-attended uh, event or event I should say. Yes, it's certain to be so. And uh, Sean, we certainly appreciate your being with us tonight and sharing your recollections of Bishop Darcy with us and uh, allowing those of us who don't know him to know him just a little bit more. Thanks so much, Sean.
You're welcome. Well, we end this first part of our show with Bishop Emeritus John Darcy reflecting on his time in the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend. I've offered my life to him always. When I became a priest, when I became a bishop, when I went to Fort Wayne, South Bend, I told him I would always try to do what I thought was, what I thought was his will. That was my promise to him. We had a lot of challenges early on in schools and in life and the things that happened across the country among priests. But God gave us the light and strength to do it, and I have wonderful people around me. I have good advisors, priests and laity. I've always been devoted to priests. It's the main uh, responsibility of the bishop, and we have great priests out there. People have told me that, and I always prayed that God would send us more because we need them, and we're beginning to get them. Pope John Paul once said, said, wrote that a priest and, and bishop should love the church, and that portion given to him in the same way a man, uh, uh, the same love a man has for his wife. And that's kind of been my ideal, you know? And uh, it's, it's, it's a life of love, yeah. or it's nothing. It says of the, of, the, of the priest and the bishop, it's an office of love. So pastoral love, you know, care for, care for them as Jesus Christ would care for them. The privilege of shepherding that diocese, of preaching, well, preaching man, Christ to them. Like I've been out there 28 years, and the sacrifice was not mine, it was my dear sister's. Two of them still living, one has gone to God. I come home twice a year, but they, they're the ones that made the sacrifice. I mean, I was at a place I loved. I loved the people, love was returned. It was the right diocese for me. A little too much driving sometimes. You know, I was told when I came that Fort Wayne South Bend are, are divided and so forth, but I gave equal, equal strength to both. I, I, anytime I had a big Mass in Fort Wayne, I had in South Bend. Uh, I remember the Christmases, I would say Mass, uh, Christmas Eve in South Bend, drive through the night, listen to the music, say the midnight, and then say the morning Mass on TV. South Bend is important, it's not secondary. So I tried to give them the best I, I could to both Fort Wayne and South Bend. I loved every bit of that diet. I loved going to the parishes. To go into those parishes and see them full, and, and, and see them close to their priests, strengthening the schools for the elementary schools and high schools so they'll be there for the future. So much so that I miss it. What I receive from them is more important than what I gave them. I receive love, understanding, uh, their devotion to the faith.